The moment is finally here. <laughs> AMD has just revealed the highly coveted Project Raphael, which is really the Ryzen 7000 series, and many of you might be confused on what to expect and see when it comes to this new generation in computational strength, performance, and price. We want to do a little bit of an explainer video to show off what you can expect with the CPU and motherboards and check out the CPU in depth, as well as showing you something secret that we found in the processor itself. Like always, if you like our videos and want to see more unboxing and exclusive in-depth videos like this one today, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so don't miss out on another video. First, we'll get into what's in store for all you gamers, enthusiasts, and creators out there, especially when it comes to picking the right CPU for you. From the flagship and most powerful chip, the Ryzen 9 7950X, boasting an unreal 16 single core and 32 threads, which according to the time of this filming and the release of the chip is set to be the fastest CPU in the world. Damn. To its more affordable entry of the Ryzen 7000 series Zen 4 processors, the Ryzen 5 7600X has 6 cores and 12 threads. AMD reports to have an average 13% boost in IPC uplift and its flagship CPU going up to 5.7 GHz max frequency when compared to the Ryzen 5000 series and Zen 3 architecture. All of this resulting in just about 30% increase in single core performance when again compared to the Ryzen 5000 series. You're probably all eager to see what the new Ryzen 7000 series looks like, so let's unbox this and check out what it has in store and all the specs. All right, so now let's get this open and let's see what's inside. So already we can see that this box itself is a lot thinner. I mean, mainly because with the older processors, they actually included the fan itself. With this model, it's very clear that it isn't included. Um, already, actually, before we even open it, let's look. Um, so we can see socket AM5, cooler not included, like we mentioned before. Eight cores, 16 thread processor, 5.4 gigahertz max boost, with 4.5 gigahertz base, 40 megabytes of cache, and unlock. So you can overclock this. The model that we have specifically, I'm sorry we didn't mention it earlier, but we actually have the Ryzen 7 7700X. So we'll be opening that. So let's see what's inside. Okay, so looking at it, like we said before, it's very minimal. Already we can see here, if you've ever built a PC before, you don't really need this, so we can kind of just... So let's try to get into the meat and bones of this and see what it looks like. Um, already you can see they, they, they're keeping the same little, little accent here, accent there. So, I mean, it's cool, it's cool, I like it. Um, so yeah, let's open it. So as you can see, there's nothing really in the box itself other than ta -da, the CPU. It also has engraved into the plastic AM5. So there you go. That's what the processor looks like itself. But yeah, let's take a look at the back, which is the biggest change. So just like we mentioned before, and we're gonna be mentioning in the video, um, this is gonna be a land grid away. So you notice how there's no pins on this. It's a huge change from the old processors. The pins are actually gonna be located on the motherboard itself. We'll say from holding it, it does feel a little bit heftier than other CPUs, but that might be just me. With the new Zen 4 architecture, the Ryzen 7000 series may change us not only to the performance, but to the type of socket the motherboard chipset has as well. If you take a look here, you can see in the new Zen 4 architecture, the AMD actually may change to the AM5 socket. This actually features a new LAN grid array arrangement, opposed to the previous generation's pin grid array. So the days of accidentally dropping your CPU and bending the pins are over. I remember seeing videos of people dropping their CPU and getting a credit card and trying to put it in between just to straighten the pins itself. Um, with this, you really don't have to worry. Or, if it's too far gone, having to pay respect to both your CPU and your wallet. <coughs> but in regards to the motherboard, AMD made the change to LGA to boost the performance of PCIe 4.0 and more importantly, 5.0, which is a huge change. PGA sockets from the previous generation, or in this case, AM4, were known as zero insertion four sockets, meaning you didn't have to actually press the CPU down on the motherboard itself for it to make connection. All you had to do was just drop the CPU into the socket, pull down on the lever, and both would connect in harmony. The downside of an LGA motherboard is on the pins itself. If you were to bend or to break the pins on the motherboard itself, it is a lot harder to repair rather than having the pins on the CPUs 
to be bent or skewed in that case. On the other hand, there are ball grid array sockets that are mostly used on mobile CPUs and system on a chip hardware. But honestly, we're not really gonna get into that today. So, do socket types matter? Not only are there just LGA, BGA, and PGA sockets, there are a varying amount of pins on each socket type. Some motherboards with LGA sockets have just about 1,200 pins, while others can have up to 1,300 pins. Usually, we start seeing a change in pin count when there's a new generation of processor along the way. In this case, it'd be the Ryzen 7000 series. But even workstation processors can have up to 2,000 pins, and some servers, 4,000 pins. Which brings us to the Ryzen 7000 series, which has a whopping 1,718 pins. I know many of you are worried about your cooling solution, the new Ryzen 7000 series. I'm happy to tell you are covered. You can continue to use your existing AM4 coolers, there being less than one millimeter difference when installing into the new motherboard. So you, at home, don't have to worry just yet about getting a new CPU cooler for your new station. The AM5 socket is expected to be supported until at least 2025. AMD has stated that longevity is a key factor for its support into PCIe 4.0 to PCIe 5.0, even DDR5 RAM. The new push into PCIe 5.0 will be sure to turn some heads. The remarkable speeds you'll get not only with your GPU and NVMe will surely give you a benefit in your workstation. Now let's get back to the CPU. Starting with the Ryzen 9 7950X having 16 cores and 32 threads, total TDP of 170 watts, 80 megabytes of cache, and the Ryzen 9 7900X not being too far off in specs. 7950X is definitely catered towards more of the enthusiast gamer side, while we found that the 7700X is actually more catered towards people who want the performance without breaking their budget. While the 7600X is actually the more affordable option with six cores and 12 threads. 38 megabytes of cache and a total TDP of 105 watts. The newest chips have been tested to provide not only an improvement in gaming, but what we saw was an improvement in content creation. As for people who are more artistic, whether it be graphics, modeling, streaming, or even rendering, you'll be sure to notice at least a 30% single core performance boost compared to the last generation of AMD processors. This is good news, especially for the huge uptick in people who want to game and also dabble in content creation here and there. With gaming, you'll still see at least a 5% boost in performance when compared to Intel's last generation of CPUs. Now you may be wondering, why haven't we really mentioned anything about the motherboards itself? but we want to make a separate video to kind of break down what we found with the newest AM5 chipsets. Thank you for watching and supporting us, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to continue seeing content from us for you at home.